to Off the Shelf. I'm your host, Yvonne Wolf. Today, our special guest is Margaret Paterik. She is a retired professor at National Lewis University and University of Illinois in Chicago. Welcome, Meg. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I understand that you have been a committee member for two years on the Outstanding International Book Committee for Uni United States uh, Board, board, yeah, board, board of, of Books, books for, youth. for Youth. Yes. yes. And that recommends children books for um, pre-K to grade 12. Yes, that's that true. That is quite an accomplishment. Can you t share with us how, uh, what are some criteria for being on this committee or for books to be selected? Sure. Uh, there are about 30 to 40 books that are chosen. The committee has nine members plus a leader who does not vote. And we're chosen by the um, United States Board of Books for Youth. We send in an application. They try to pick people from all over the United States and we serve for two years. So we could be meeting anywhere in the U.S. when we have our final three-day meeting. But in the meantime, publishers send us three to four hundred books to our personal mailbox. Mm -hmm. And the year I, the two years I served was 2012-2013. Uh, there another gal and I from she was from Seattle. We had all the authors whose last names started with A through F. So we got all ages of books, and we would read the books and email each other and talk to each other, text how, wh how we thought about the books. And then we would, there were so many, there are some we'd say, no way are we going to, t this is not going to go to the meeting. But then we go to the meeting with maybe 15 of our favorites, mm -hmm. and everybody uh, does, and we talk about each of the books starting with pre-K um, and K. So by, so by age. By band. age group, yeah, we talk about group. the books and then we will, it's a, we vote. Um, it's an Australian ballot, so we don't all know. And then if everybody is not voting for those books, would they call it off the table. This is done for other committees too. So the books go on the floor that are not going to be chosen and mm -hmm. it's sometimes disappointing. Yes. But Even we on only the first can, round, right? We yeah. only can choose about 10 to 12 books for um, K to 3, mm -hmm. and then intermediate books from 3 to 6, and then the um, junior high books or middle school books, mm -hmm. uh, they're about l usually less, maybe 8, and then the YA books, uh, it's hard to find as quality books, so it's maybe 5 or 6 books that are and chosen. YA means young adult. Young adult. Yes. So now, okay, so let me get this straight. When you're starting with a 15, are you just looking at what you think is a quality book? Well, there, does it, um, do you look at like this is a topic that's um, already been addressed or something that's interesting to the world right now? Or how does it, do, are you limited by what was given last year? You know, uh, what, what's no, already but it's, it's, a very, um, it's a very strict criteria. Okay. Here's some of the uh, selection criteria uh, points. Books that represent the best of children's literature from other countries. Books that introduce readers to the United States to out, of the United States to outstanding authors and illustrators from other countries. Books that help children in the United States see the world and from other points of view. Mm -hmm. Books that provide a perspective or address a topic otherwise missing from children's literature in the United States. Mm -hmm. Books that exhibit a distinct cultural flavor and books that are accessible to readers in the U.S. So they have to be translated yeah. and brought here. Uh -huh. And for the content and presentation, they have to have artistic and literary merit, originality and creativity of approach, distinct distinctiveness of topic, uniqueness of origin, origin, and qualities that engage and appeal to children. And not every book will meet every criteria. Oh, exactly. So those are hard standards. It, it is like hard. This. And we make little bookmarks uh -huh. every year. And... This is 2023, this was 2013, and you can see the font is very small because there are many books and they're from all different countries. And on the bookmark it shows, you know, the publisher and the country that it originated. Mm -hmm. So whenever I, well, I'm, I'm Canadian, so whenever I go to Canada, I pick up all the outstanding books from there or any other countries, Australia, New Zealand, or Greece. There are book awards and you would want to pick up books um, that are already award winners already award winners I and see. bring them back to the US I oh. also pick up books that we know of other languages here's the giving oh, tree in, yes, Greece, in, Greek. in Greek I can see that in yeah. Greek. yeah and this one and is this is um, whoops 
This is, he is um, Maurice Sendex of Where the Wild Things Are, and this is in French. Yes, how lovely, wow. So it's, it's great to share with children. They may not read the languages, but they can compare them. Oh, yes, to I books have. They, yeah, I have some books that are translated into Chinese. Yes, children's books, that yes, is. Yes, yeah. it's very so important, it's and they're different. It's just all different authors also. Wow, that sounds like a tough job because it, there are so many books out there, and they're so well done. It, I think it is a very difficult job, and each of these committees, um, of course, in USBBY is, is trying to bring the international books, but they just um, had the midwinter of American Library Association, and they have many awards. So I'll just tell you a little bit about the Newberry. Oh. Well, there's, it's a smaller group of people, and of course they're chosen by the American Library Association, teachers and librarians, and they do an application to be part of it. And so they meet all year, just like the USBBY members, and um, it, they only serve one time. Every year it's a whole, whole new group. It's awarded annually to the author of the most distinguished contribution to American literature, but it must be an American publisher that has published it. And here's the criteria. Interpretation of a theme or concept, presentation of information including accuracy, clarity, and organization, development of a plot, delineation of characters, delineation of a setting, and appropriateness of style. So they're looking for the text content. The illustrations help tell the story, but they're not specifically looking at illustrations. Mm -hmm. That goes to the Caldecott. Yeah. So, so the Caldecott is known for illustrations. For the illustrations, and it's... Um, the Newberry is uh, named after a person, John Newberry. The Caldecott is by, um, he was a publisher, and Caldecott was, um, worked in children's literature a long time ago. It's given annually to the artists of the most distinguished American picture book. Mm. Again, has to be published by an American publisher. Mm -hmm. Criteria, best illustrated book for children in which there is a clear collective storyline that runs through the book's pictures and the words we consider for youth, ages birth through age 14. Wow. So How sweet. both of these wow. authors are new authors. Beautiful. Uh -huh. and, uh, and she did the illustrations and the text. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, these books will show up in other ALA awards as honor books. That's what happens. Every committee chooses their books. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a Coretta Scott King Award. And I brought the illustrator for Coretta Scott King, An American Story uh, by Dave Coulter. So he won the Coretta Scott King, which honors Coretta Scott King, the wife of Dr. Martin yes. Luther King. Uh, yes. And this is Kwame Alexander did the words, who has, is, has been a Newbery Award winner. He writes a lot of poetry, <laughs> especially see. brings boys into love of literature. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's phenomenal, the illustrations with all different types of artwork. Yes. And with Kwame Alexander's words. So that's a winner, and that has um, shown up in other um, awards. So when you select these books or you read them, you know their names. You, you know the authors' You know names. the, uh, many times you know the authors. Yes. And an interesting thing about, I'm going to show you a book that I wrote that was never published. The author and the um, illustrator never get together. That's true. Sometimes there, they There's never an art. Meet. Well, yeah. if it's a famous person yes. who's written before, yes, they do the book together. But the majority of times, the artist, the illustrator, and the person who's written the text never meet. There's an art director that chooses an artist to illustrate a book. That's and right. Then, the publisher often yes. assigns you an yes. illustrator. Right. So and that's... there have been times when authors haven't been that happy and then after when they see the book they've asked the illustrator to make some changes mm -hmm. and that happens mm -hmm. so in your case in your case you say you have a book that's not yes. published yes up to, I can show it to you and um, I have two well I have the articles that I wrote I also have my dissertation here that was published but this is the book 40 years ago and I didn't know I had to learn um, I put the illustrations and the words together. And mm -hmm. I was, you know, I went to an art director, mm -hmm. and this is the way I thought you do it. And so I'm putting the words overlaid by nice. the pictures. Beautiful. Um, yeah. But I should have just sent in the text. I see. And the, there are two ways to do How this to. now. Um, you can self-publish, and a lot of people do that mm -hmm. online with oh, Amazon. Yes. 
or you can get a, um, someone to represent you and then send it out to the publishers. Now, there are three great big publishers like Scholastic. Yes. Um, if you're doing international books, they're not always pulling forth international books. They're looking for Jan Brett. They're looking for the same authors that they know will sell. But smaller, like Lee and Lowe books, smaller publishers that do international books. Mm, but in, let's say you want to do a book and you're wondering, and you're reading all these award winners. Every year, this is a guide to book publishers, editors, and literary agents. I, when I was writing, and even now, and it's from the library. And this is not just for children's book. No. Oh, this is for every. So all books. Yeah. So you, you, there are different authors that do these books, but you look up the type of book you're going to submit, mm -hmm. and you, you look at the query letters. You put a letter in front of your text. Or if you're an illustrator, you have a portfolio that you share with your literary agent, and then she or he presents that to the publisher. So you can have a lot of rejections, like Pearl S. Buck, who did her famous books. It took her 10 years to be published. Right, so it right. can take a while, and you send it out. You can't send it more to more than one publisher. Then you wait for the results. And hopefully, the best thing would be they make comments. If they don't say anything, then how can you improve? Exactly, exactly. So this is uh, quite a... Ah, oh, big game and huge stakes, right? Right, <laughs> so it, it definitely yeah. is. Yeah. So it, there, there are lots of other awards. Um, John Steptoe Award for the New African American Literature, Alex Awards for Young Adult Books, Margaret A. Edwards for an Author's Body of Work, Michael Prince for a, just one YA Award winner, Mildred Batchelder awarded to American Publisher that brings international books into the U.S., the Pura Belpre Award, for a Latino, Latinx author. So here's one from a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And this is this year's. And I'm reading it. Mexican. Yeah. So now graphic novels are starting to be their award own, winners. Yes, and are they in their own category or no? Graphic no, this novels. is this one uh, for um, the Pure Belpre, which is Latinx mm -hmm. books. Mm -hmm. So, Amer so African American mm -hmm. um, with uh, Coretta Scott King. They're all different, you know, Asian Pacific books, they're all different awards, many through the American Library Association, to honor those books. They haven't been given for 20 years. They're just Starting now to. understanding I see. we need to have mirrors and windows so that children can look at other nationalities and understand these are great books to read or mm -hmm. mirrors that reflect their own experience. And those are becoming award winners. You're Absolutely. Saying. Yes. And it's very important. So let's see. So what was one difficulty you did not anticipate when you became a committee member? Um, I don't think there were any difficult. I didn't realize there would be three to 400 books. That's why I am thinking, <laughs> well, when, too. I, when these, that surprised it's me. It's like at first, the first six months, it starts about February. Wow, you're opening the books. It's like having a holiday. But then it, we meet in November. Let's say September and October, you're still getting boxes of book, and you have to read those and confer with your partner right. before the, the mid-November meeting. meeting. Wow! So you're reading all year long. You're reading much. all year They're long. Not, they don't come in one. No, one delivery. no. The publisher and the publisher send them, uh -huh. and then you have the choice after. I've given them a lot to Bernie's Book Bank mm -hmm. or other teachers, and you know some I've kept them, my favorites for myself. But you give them away so that they can be used if they're authentic and appropriate. There are books I have to say that I read, and Not I don't know what, where that we're talking right. about <laughs> the Middle Ages, and they've got a computer on a on a boat. No, it doesn't. It doesn't match. Mm. And then you see there's a series of five. I could hardly get through the first one. No. I so see. there, I love all genres. I, historical fiction is maybe my friend, favorite, but I've learned to love science fiction. So yes, that good. is an interesting genre. So how, okay, so how does a children's picture book determine the vocabulary to be based on that age band? Now how do you, do you have a yeah, way to evaluate that? Or do books come with the age band? Or? They usually come with suggested age range, but many times we will not honor that. We, we do book reviews on Goodreads or in the school library journal. We say the reasons we chose the book and do a, um, a summary of each of the books. So you have to know children's developmental levels right. and reading all these other books that have won awards that 
are honoring the age level and vocabulary, then you know, okay, that, that worked for them and this doesn't. So let's, let me try to base my book if you're writing one or if you're teaching one or sharing it with your child, let's pick out the award winners or the ones that follow the proper evaluations of vocabulary. You don't want to have something too hard. Of course, you can try it out with children too. I've done that. Have little, little focus groups of five or six children and you can see the books that fall off the edge. They're going to be off the table. They don't understand them. Mm -hmm. And you would think, oh, this would be, they, I explain these words, but it, it's too hard. The concepts mm -hmm. have to be things that they understand. Picture words. Right. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of books I have here. For example, there would be these, uh, this was the year I was in USBBY. So you're going to have very simple books. This is a board book. Very, yes. Very simple, but children can learn to read them. Mm -hmm. um, and this one was from, let's see, France. Yes. And then it's, I have... Um, yeah, it's quite beautiful. Yes, books. this is another one from Canada, mm -hmm. uh, from Quebec. Mm -hmm. So the, the illustrations are very interesting. But the concepts bring, the, bring the window to children of children in the world, how we're so much alike, but mm -hmm. also there are differences to honor. And my other one that I have here, I don't want to forget, YA. This won a YA award for this year, 9 to 12, stateless. And Elizabeth Ween is a wow. well-honored author, and it's about um, women in World War II. Wow, so very interesting. Really, and the, many yeah. of the, these could be crossover books, not just for YA, but for adults as well. So what are some feedback you have from your students when they, or do they feel overwhelmed by the kind of... Um, well, you mean my graduate students. Right, yes, graduate I, students. Yes, because I taught exactly. K through three, so that's my background experience. But my graduate students, well, they think that children's literature, a survey of children and adolescent literature is going to be a really easy course. Hmm. And they, <laughs> they ask, especially undergraduates, do we have to read all the books that we're going to talk about in book clubs? Mm -hmm. That's many of the Chicago teachers. Some of them don't have library cards. So they ask, mm -hmm. should I get a library card? And said, if you don't yes. want to go out and buy all these books, you should get to know the Chicago Public Library because it's yeah. a great resource. So I think that's, they just didn't realize how much work this is. Mm -hmm. And every week you're going to be not only reading the book for your book club that you chose, you chose from four different books, for a small five or six person uh, group of a class of maybe 25 to 30. Um, so it's very important that you also bring books to share that you think is a great for this genre. Each yeah. week would be a different genre. Wow, so are there books that don't make it for one year and come back for the next year? No, the books that come up for published. awards are published the year before. I see. So then, I mean, they, they could be honor books. They have the winners, mm -hmm. but then they also will choose a couple yeah. honors, two or three, or maybe not any, mm -hmm. but there could be ones that are just not really second place. They're awesome, but not as great as the one that won. Do you ever get contacted by authors who uh, who would like to put in a good word for themselves? <laughs> Meg? No, no, not you. That that wouldn't be allowed. Yeah. So you you do not contact any of the authors or no. But I do. Strict... I do go listen to the authors, and I've met oh. so many of the authors at conferences. But you don't tell them you're uh, on the committee? No. Oh, so no, that part I, is... I just go and I'm, it's confidential. I go and meet them and, mm -hmm. and I want to see their whole body of work. And that's what... Um, there's some authors like Pam Munoz Ryan that won a special award this year for her body of Latin, Latinx work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so it's a bit of a secret job, aren't you? <laughs> it, it is a bit of a secret. Yeah, but it's fun to meet the authors. Don't you find that when you see their body of works, you feel like you understand? Oh, it's, it's very exciting. I'm starstruck. Mm -hmm. I get their <laughs> autograph. I get my <laughs> selfie with them. And yeah, it's, it's wonderful because I can see and I, how how much work that they put into their, their work, like Kwame Alexander, into his poetry. Mm -hmm. He visits schools to try to encourage young boys to start reading, write poetry. You know, yeah. he's, he's helping them do that. And then there are illustrators. I have some beautiful illustrations that have been given to me that are in my home from illustrators that I've honored or who have come to my graduate classes. I often would have a, a children's author, a YA author, and an illustrator come and show their body of work and talk about their books. And I even have um, an author who used to come in every year 
that has written books about her mother and the Holocaust. Oh, and there's yeah. never a dry eye because she yes. shows the video, um, Fern Schumer's Chapman, of her mother who left Germany and came here, but showing how a, a junior high class brought she and her best friend together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and yes. it, the, that was shown on Oprah, and it was very exciting. Yes, very moving topics. Right. So, Meg, what is the limit of picture books? How is it determined? Like, is it how many pages or? No, there, the there's no limit. Mm -hmm. And um, the OIB, the USBBY yes. books, can be as many as you choose. But the Newberry and Caldecott, I mean, they're going to be reading through three or 400 books. Yes, I mean the limit of what they, uh, the um, format. Let's say how many pages makes a picture no. book. No, no, it doesn't. No. So graphic novels, how do you make that distinction? Th that between is something new, but they, a picture book is usually 12 or 13 pages. Okay, so and, and, that but, is a limit. But yeah. intermediate and adult books, they can, they can be whatever limit, whatever works for telling the story. And, but there cannot be a series, right? It could, it could be a series, but you're using, usually choosing the first book or one book in the series. But in a series, if it's something really good, like Hunger Games won a, a lot of awards, and each book stands on its own. Ah, I see. So the second book could have come up for National Book Award, come mm -hmm. up for an adult book, but it could have been the second book that won the award and not the first, even though it's a sequel. I see. Then how about I think the the series called the uh, a series of unfortunate events. That one was very well, very, very popular, very famous by Lemony Snicket, and I, but it wasn't didn't win series. for a series. Mm. I don't know if it. I'd have to go back and look and see because it's been published a long time ago. Right. What it, awards it won, but it would only be for one book. Mm, I see. I see. This is fascinating. Well, so what would you advise someone who uh, who might be interested in writing award-winning? Well, as William Faulkner said, read, read, read. Read all the books from the level, award-winning books. Authors, read if your children, you want to share with your class or your own children. Read all the books you can, and it gives you a good idea of what maybe that publisher is looking for. And of course, this book, it's yes. like a Bible, um, yeah. gives all the information that you would need, who you would go to if you have a book about an Asian child in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. You know, see. who Something would be specific. interested, maybe yeah. not Scholastic, right. but it could be Lee and Lowe mm -hmm. or Carol Rhoda or another publisher. So, so who you send it to makes all the difference as well. Right, right. And that's why um, if you publish on your own, it's, it's hard and it's expensive, but then you get published. Um, it, it's a shorter amount of time to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. But if you have an agent, the agent rep will represent you with the publisher, and then the publisher takes care of printing the books and does all that publicity for you. That's right. Yeah, and that's how a book launches off. Right. Yeah. So, well, Meg, can you tell us what connects you to Glenview? You've been a longtime resident in Glenview. Yes. I moved here um, in 1970. I was hired in the Glenview Public Schools, and I taught for five years. Um, then I took a, uh, some time off, 10 years in fact, because I had four children. So I was very busy being picture lady and room oh, mother yes. for those four children. <laughs> the only problem was my husband and I had some difficulty because we had four schools and they'd have events on the same night. <laughs> oh, you know, of I think we, yeah. All parents are saying that. But, um, and I have 11 grandchildren, so I'm the reading grandma. So I'm oh, sharing I'm sure books with, with them all. you have an extensive library of yeah. books. Right? And it's nice for other teachers or parents will ask me, I want to get some books for, what do you suggest for my child for the holidays right. or for a birthday? And I can do that. So, you know, I taught for 32 years in the Glenview, in Glenview and then I moved on to Northbrook. So I taught in District 27 yeah. for the rest of the time, and that was exciting. Yeah, so you, you know a lot of children and what they enjoy uh, right. reading. Right, and it's wonderful to see them. You know, I go to the North-South musicals, and I can, you know, talk to them, and they're, they're, they're so... Of course, I don't remember all the last names, but I can remember their first name. That's, That's okay. amazing. <laughs> well, thank you, Meg, for coming here and joining us today. Okay, and I want to say one little last thing. Um, Jorge Luis Borges was a um, Portuguese poet, and he said, you know, I think paradise is going to be like a library. Oh. 
That is so That's beautiful. That's how I, I feel. It's so important to read. Oh, it is. Thank you, Meg, for thank you for having me here. And thank you for watching. Join us next time on Off the Shelf.